So yeah, I come at this from the um, point of view of actually creating content to use on um, digital platforms. And hopefully, in a moment, we'll have a presentation up on the screen. Do we have a presentation? No? OK. Well, look, I'm going to talk anyway, and we'll get the slides and catch up. It's not a big problem. So um, some of our biggest shows um, internationally are shows such as Skins, shows such as Midsummer Murders. Um, there we go. Um, shows um, such as Million Second Quiz, which we've just produced for NBC, and Undercover Boss, which is on air with CBS at the moment. Now, when I grew up, TV was not that difficult. It was actually very simple. I grew up in the 70s and 80s. Um, the first TV set we had, I think we had three channels on, um, and all the content came through the um, TV aerial. Um, and, you know, if you wanted to watch something, you actually made sure that you saw it. So when JR got shot in Dallas, that was one of those moments that everyone just stopped what they were doing and tuned into Dallas. So it was an interesting time to grow up. It was really about appointment to view television. Of course, things evolved. Shortly, we had pay TV that came along, and we had an epic number of um, TV stations. We had DVD players come along. But the main thing was that to schedule a whole evening's television, I would go to one of those linear television broadcasters. And to be honest, because there were so many channels on the EPG, I would probably go to one of the top three, what became four, what became five channels um, coming through the aerial. Now, of course, over time, things have evolved. Um, video over internet protocol became more, um, more readily available. And the reality is that when internet connections became fast enough, for most people, the reality of viewing internet was still quite an isolated activity. It was something that happened in your bedroom or something that happened in your study. It wasn't something that you could do as a family, that you sit together. And I still believe that um, television is a very social activity. So we moved from a world where everything was locked onto one device and you couldn't take it with you. And that's sort of around about April 2009. And according to Comscore, people in the US were watching about 12.8 minutes of video per day on average. Uh, and that, that's just the people that are using the video. And we fast forward to a world of today, the connected world that we're talking about now, where content follows us around to any device, including the TV set. And suddenly you see a massive leap in the number of minutes that people are watching. So again, if we look to the US going back to um, September, so just two months ago, people are watching 40.3 minutes a day. This is the people that are actually watching digital video. And that pretty much equates to the length of a, com of, of a um, US commercial television program. Because of all the adverts, they tend to come in at 40 minutes. So it's a very interesting world that we've moved to. In the UK, we looked at on-demand on Virgin Media. Uh, Virgin Media is the UK's leading um, cable company. And if I go back four years ago, the average Virgin Media customer was watching around about 30 minutes of um, on-demand content. Today, that's gone up to about 50 minutes. So again, the length of a um, commercial piece of television in the UK market. And by 2017, according to our friends at Screen Digest, it's projected to hit 60 minutes. So that tells us something very interesting. It tells us that whatever we hear at conferences around the world, that pay TV actually isn't going anywhere any time soon. Sure, there's been the um, threat of guys like Netflix, Hulu coming into the market, but actually, in my opinion, from what I'm seeing, that has led to pay TV upping its game and evolving its model. Players such as Virgin, Sky, Comcast, all those kind of players have evolved their businesses from EPG-driven delivery of linear channels to one TV set in the home to variations on what we call a TV Anywhere solution, with authenticated access to content away from the main screen and the ability to self-schedule from a wide range of on-demand content from their broadcast partners and from third parties. And in fact, if you look at these numbers from Screen Digest, pay TV is still going to be the largest part of video uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future we're still seeing a growth rate of around about 20% um, over a five-year period. And that's not bad for a mature business. But what we're not seeing is simply more of the same. And that's the one thing that I think we all agree on, is that the world is evolving. We are seeing television evolve dramatically. Viewing is fragmenting, although overall minutes of viewing is increasing. Consumer choice has never been better, which is great unless you're a content producer. As over the top has grown, as pay TV has evolved to fight back, and many major broadcasters now offer their own catch-up services, effectively, the keys to the schedule have been unlocked. People can watch whatever they want, whenever they want. We've known this was coming. It is now here. 
So when my production companies at All3 Media make a show, they've got to take in mind that they are going to be competing against Breaking Bad any hour of the day. Worse than that, they're going to be competing against Sopranos, Modern Family, Nurse Jackie. Any major TV franchise in the last 10 years is probably available at any point online through either legal or illegal means. And in a world where popularity and brand recognition becomes increasingly important to surface content, where television still needs advertising and sponsorship revenues from mass audiences, and where buzz and recommendation becomes increasingly important, it's important for shows to embrace the digital landscape as early as possible in a considered way. So let me give you some examples of what we're doing at All3 Media about that. So first off is a show called Million Second Quiz, which has uh, just finished on um, NBC in the US. Uh, funnily enough, it lasts a million seconds, which equates to around about 11 nights of primetime television. But this wasn't just any ordinary quiz show, and I'm hoping um, if the guys upstairs have a video clip uh, marked MSQ that we can show you a little bit about that. Can we do that? Let's see. No, okay, I don't think we can. Let's carry on anyway. So, Million Second Quiz, just to explain what the video would have told you, is effectively a television show where to qualify for it, you have to play an app. And that app is a um, quiz app, and you can challenge people across the US, and you get your score up, and if you get your score up, you qualify to be on this TV show. And every night on Million Second Quiz, live on NBC in the US, somebody would be doorstepped to appear on the show the next night to possibly win the largest prize in US television game show history. Now, this app was trailered about four weeks before we went to transmission, and by the time we went on air, we had one million downloads of the app. By the time the show finished its 11-night run, we had two million downloads of the app. We had 39 million bouts of the quiz played. So it just shows what you can do with digital media and integrating that into a TV show. And the interesting thing is that because people could sign in with Facebook, because they were excited by the prospect, they were sharing this information with friends, so it became actually quite viral. Additionally, the show was available on NBC.com 24-7. The show ran a consecutive million seconds from the point it kicked off to the point that it finished. And you could tune in any point that you wanted on any device on NBC.com. So that's one example of what we're doing in the digital space. Another example is a quiz called Was It Something I Said, which has just started on Channel 4 in the UK. Now, Was It Something I Said incorporates the first use of Twitter as a dedicated play-along companion for a TV show, again, tapping into the social marketing. Viewers are regularly directed to the show's Twitter account by the host and encouraged to answer questions at the same time as the panel. And in doing that, they're unlocking additional content that people won't otherwise see at home. They're getting their score on a leaderboard that drives back to the broadcaster's website. They're getting um, additional jokes from the panels. It's a quiz um, game show. Uh, they're getting additional um, animations. So people are actually taking part in this to feel that they're a bigger part of the show and sharing that experience with their friends. And what we've noticed, we've only been doing this for a couple of weeks, but from the first week, the people that started playing the game at the beginning of the show, 80% of those stuck with it and were still playing at the end of the show. So as an audience retention tool, in a world where people get trigger-happy with advertising, that's quite fantastic. And then the last thing, I'm not going to try and show the video because I'm not sure it's going to work, um, is a show called The Only Way is Essex. Um, and The Only Way is Essex is a fast turnaround constructed reality show. So they shoot an episode. It's the only show that works like this, actually, in the world. They shoot an episode, they play it out on air, the cast actually gather to see that, and they get revealed secrets for the very first time. And they then go and shoot the next episode the next day. So it's absolutely a real-life living soap opera. And fans absolutely love that because they are actually part of a live conversation. This isn't something that's been pre-recorded months in advance. They can actually get the raw emotion of the people in the show. I can't call them cast because they're not actors, but the people in the show and go into Q&A rooms with them on Twitter. They can play with them on Facebook. They can have an ongoing conversation with the community. So we just returned to ITV2 in the UK, which is, I think, pretty much the leading digital um, channel at the moment. Um, and the first episode back generated 155,000 tweets, peaking at 5,400 tweets in a minute. On Facebook, the show has a weekly reach of 1.3 million, while an, with an individual post reaching something like 275,000 viewers. Social media for TOWIE is incredibly well organized and considered as part of that production process because it is in continuous production once it's on air. 
We connect the viewers to the cast. We regularly post links to galleries, to additional video that we've shot while we're making the show, and drive people back to the broadcaster website. And that's what makes the shows attractive to our customers and broadcasters and our consumers. So, in a very short summary, just as platforms have evolved from the living room that I grew up in to the connected world that we're in today, production is having to do that as well. So rather than just bolting on digital pieces and concepts as a nice little add-on once the show's locked, we're encouraging our producers to become more and more involved in digital at an early stage and consider all the things that they can do with their program before we go to air, before we actually lock the program down. Our production companies are working hard to embrace that without ostracizing audiences who do not want to be a part of it. It's very important to consider there is still a large audience that do not want to connect to shows in any other way. And the challenge really for us as a business, I mean, my part of the business is to sell content internationally, is to try and get those campaigns to travel with the show socially so that programs can be found in different markets around the world. Apologies for the video. It's an irony to be talking about television and not show you any television, but thank you very much.